Hello everyone, it's been a while. Um, I, I've been picking up fragrances for the past couple months. I guess since 2021 started, but I haven't made a, a video on any of these since I started. I've been kind of reviewing older ones that I've had and have time, had, have had time to wear and all that. So I'm just going to do a quick overview or it's gonna tr I'm going to try to be quick, but it might be a longer video. But I'm going to show you what I've gotten in the past couple months, let's say four or five months, uh, in no particular order. And uh, yeah, we can get started real quick. Um, first one that I'm going to put up here is Tom Ford's Noir Anthracite. Um, has been discontinued, I believe. Um, but I love this one. I've worn it a couple times now. And I'm not sure what all the mixed reviews are about. Um, some people think this is absolutely disgusting, but I think it's quite nice and definitely not uh, a mainstream release, but I do enjoy it. It's kind of niche type, um, very different from anything out there, you know. Um, but for this one, we have uh, Sichuan pepper ginger uh bergamot um some spices galbanum jasmine and in the base you have cedar birch leather sandalwood patchouli and amberwood so there's a bunch of things going on here um but let me see it's really dark and green and smells like dirt um but I, I really enjoy this one. I've worn it in hot weather, but I believe it's gonna be great in the fall coming up, so I can't wait to wear this more. Um, got it for a great pass, so couldn't pass it up. So great stuff by Tom Ford, Nora Anthracite. Sad it's discontinued, but I'm sure it's gonna, everyone's gonna be looking out for it later. Um, next we have uh, Chanel Pour Monsieur. Um, the EDT version. So here it is. I got the, I believe, 75 mil bottle of it. I believe this has been discontinued as well. And now they have switched over to the EDP version. Um, kind of bl blind bought this, but I do enjoy it. Um, my only complaint is that it doesn't last as long on me. But it's a great fresh scent um, very citrus forward um, top notes have Sicilian lemon pedigrain and enrolli and then the middle notes you have the cardamom and ginger and coriander so you do have a little bit of slight spice in here which is nice and then the base has oak moss vetiver and cedar so this one this one was launched I believe yeah 1955 and so it's an older fragrance. I'm sure it's gone through its reformulations here and there to appeal to the to the market at that time. But it smells really, really classic. Um, definitely for a more mature gentleman or someone who appreciates just classic fragrances. Um, citrus base as well. I'm not the biggest citrus fan but i do enjoy wearing this one it's a little darker with the spices in there but still fresh um i'm gonna probably reach for this more throughout the summer so we'll see how that goes and sometimes i do put it on after a shower which i do with a lot of fragrances so um we'll keep going back to that one um doing a complete 180 this one right here is DS by DS and Durga. Um, it's part of their like higher end line. They have this one priced at 350, I believe, along with the Durga counterpart. So there's like I guess it's their higher end flagship ones. So I believe this was the more popular one. Um, this one's based off of India so you have Kashmiri Saffron, Frangipani, Gardenia, Lolo Yellow Lotus Attar, and Damask Rose 
and you got Sri Lankan sandalwood and vetiver. So this one's super dense and dark. Really, really good. I love this one. Um, again, this one's. I love wearing this one actually in, in the in the heat, but I'm sure this one's gonna perform really well in the in the fall and winter. Really beautiful oud in here. It's kind of light and creamy compared to other harsh ouds. Yeah, this one's this one's super good. Um, not for everybody for sure, but. I really, I'm a fan of darker fragrances and this hits all the notes. Um, kind of combines like light notes and dark notes together. And it's kind of a good in between for both. So really enjoy this one, DS by DS and Durga. Um, kind of want to sample the, the Durga counterpart to this before I purchase a bottle, but um, this other one I think has melon as one of the main notes, which I'm not sure how I feel about, but I'll give it a try one of these days. Uh, next we have, or the following two I just got yesterday, so I don't have much to say about these other than the fact that I like them, um, considering the fact that I bought both bottles. Um, so here we have Lavender Extreme, beautiful bottle, obviously a fingerprint magnet as well. Um, but really nice bottle. This one, this one's a aromatic fougere, but not a dense fougere. It's very airy and creamy, very, um, lavender forward as the name suggests. But notes for this one have violet and lemon, which you can definitely smell for the first 30 minutes, kind of playing around with each other. Um, not one overpowering the other. So the lemon's there, but after maybe like, yeah, 30, 30 40 minutes, that kind of dies down. And you're just left with a bunch of lavender and tonka bean. And there is also cinnamon, geranium, and rose, but again, I haven't done a full smell on this yet um, I sprayed it once yesterday on my elbow or my in the inside of my elbow and I enjoyed that and then once the dry down kicked in I, it got even better so I can't wait to try this out definitely I wear this pretty much all year round can't go wrong with that very safe scent I, I would say I don't think anyone would be offended by this one but uh yeah, this Lavender Extreme. Next we have Fougere Platine, which I believe is discontinued. I'm not too certain on that, but Tom Ford's known for that. Or lots of brands are known for discontinuing fragrances if they don't perform well in the market, which don't blame them on there. But um, this one, top notes are Clary Sage, Lavender, Basil, and Bergamot. And in the middle notes we have Artemisia, which I have no idea what that is. Maybe a plant or something, but no clue. I'll have to look that up later. Um, Olibanum, honey, and Spanish labdanum as well. And then the base you have tobacco, um, some more woody notes, and then cedar. But this one, this one's another more masculine fragrance. Um, not as creamy as as Beau de Jour. Um, I have not smelled Fougere d'Argent yet, but I really enjoy this one. And same with Beau de Jour. Um, not similar in any way, but this one's maybe a little more harsh. Maybe it's that clary sage that's kind of giving it a sharp turn to it. But again, that's only in the beginning. And then once you reach the a little bit further down the line from when you sprayed, you'll start getting a creamier, more streamlined fragrance. Um, definitely office friendly. Can't go wrong with this one. Um, I'm sure this one's going to get compliments as well. 
Um, I'll test it out at work soon and, and see what people think about it. But I always get compliments on Beau de Jure. I'm sure this one's going to be the same. Um, but yeah, can't, can't wait to test this one out. Just got it yesterday as well. Sprayed it this morning too. So yeah, that's good. Good stuff. So that's Fougere Platine by Tom Ford. Originally launched in 2018, I think alongside with um, Fougere de Rajant. And then I think Beau de Jure came, I think a year later in 2019. And then that got transitioned over into the sig signature line. So next we have, um, there's four more in the back. This one is by Banana Republic, Banana Republic Classic. Um, Classic originally released, I think early 2000s or maybe even before that, but I had never seen this one, the red version. And it's really, really hard to find any information on this one. Um, it doesn't really exist anywhere. Um, this is EDP concentration. But performance is all right. Um, that's to be expected with these type of lighter fragrances. Um, the classic, um, as the name suggests, is really classic, timeless. The the original one I'm talking about. This one's, I guess, this one you can call the red one, red EDP. But the first one that launched is just really light and has some clementine grapefruit and bergamot and some other things but then this red one adds gayak wood which to be honest i don't really detect this one smells exactly the same as the original version so i'm not too sure how much they added or how much they changed but to me it smells exactly the same but I got it for a great price I think I paid only I don't know 21 or 22 dollars at Burlington so can't complain about on that one it's 125 mil so big bottle for that price can't go wrong with that um, this one's really good in the morning if you want just something to smell um, while you're lounging around or if you want to go get groceries real quick anything like that um, this one's really good if you just want to spray a few on and not worry about wasting your other fragrances. Um, so this is a really good one that I enjoy. Um, don't really wear this one out other than like quick little things here and there or maybe even after a shower like I mentioned earlier. Um, so it's not something I wear to make a statement. It's just something to have around um, if you feel like you're naked without a fragrance. But I'm sure some people enjoy this and this could easily be a daily driver. Um, actually, this could be a great layering piece as well to add to some other um, fragrances. But let's put that one to the back now. Um, next, we have another red bottle. This one is uh, Bourbon by Bath & Body Works. Um, I've been using the Bourbon shower gel from Bath and Body Works for a while now. Maybe like two years, two, three years now. And I really enjoy it and finally decided to get the fragrance. Um, I don't wear it much as you can see. I, I mean, I just got it, so I haven't done much wear on it, but it, it's really nice and clean. The, the notes are pretty simple. You just got amber, oak, white pepper, and that's about it and black amber but so it's not really bourbon I would say not really boozy at all to be honest but it is really nice really masculine um, I just wish the performance was better maybe all of Bath and Body Works fragrances for to me last less than four hours but I mean that's what you get for the price I believe the retail for these is $40 um, Sometimes you can find them cheaper with coupons and all that, which is what, what I did with um, this one and then the one in the back over there that you see. Um, so if you could pick it up on there, feel free to do that. Um, most Bath & Body Works fragrances are clones of, of other things. Like I have a, I have a five more 
that I haven't shown on video yet, but some of them are clones of um, Aventus, which I believe Forest was, came out right before Oasis, and then you got Midnight, which is a uh, Savage clo uh, clone, and other things like that. But this one, I don't really get any comparisons to other ones. Um, I saw Fragrantica, some people were comparing it to the one, which is nowhere near that. By by. No, this does not smell like the one at all. Um, which is nice. So I think this one stands alone. Um, really good stuff. If you like something masculine but light and airy as well, or if you're just a fan of amber, this one's really good. Not high quality amber, but it's there, you know. Um, next we have Oasis, another beautiful bottle. So. I love the shape of these Bath and Body Works bottles. This nice uh, rectangle thing and nice, nice glass too. Really high quality glass. Um, so Aces over there, you see with the gold lettering. Um, this is, I believe, their newest release. And I think this is pretty unisex overall. Um, for most of these Bath and Body Works fragrances, they list they pretty much dumb it down to three notes. I'm sure there's more behind the scenes, but um, this one just has coconut water, seaside lavender, and wild palm. So this one's really great for um, if you want to feel like you're on vacation. Um, I haven't worn it much, but my my girlfriend wears it. Um, she actually got this one for herself. She wanted to get it for me, but I, I'm I'm not a huge fan of coconut, so, um, but turns out coconut coconut's super light here, which is nice. But yeah, this one's good, but I mean, it can smell cheap, like a cheap air freshener, but um, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it, but it is pleasant, just not my style. I guess we'll, we'll leave it at that. And then last but not least, we have um, the queen here. So you got Shalimar by Guerlain. Um, picked this one up early 2021. Um, saw it randomly at, a, at the Marshalls clearance section. Um, I think it was $40, so not too bad. And this is the 50 mil version, which I like to go towards most of my fragrances. I originally did not want to get this at all, like back in the day, because um, I, I wasn't a fan of the model, but looking at it now, or owning it now, I love it. It's really classic. Um, can't go wrong with Shalimar. Actually, you can. <laughs> it's not for everybody, but um, some people will think it smells like a like an old grandma, which I can I see where they're coming from. But once you once your nose develops, you're gonna really appreciate this one. Um, I have a lot of Orientals, um, like Labdanum 18. Uh, Musk Ravager and some others um, so I'm really a fan of this style um, but for this one top notes are uh, bergamot floral notes and then you got iris rose and jasmine and then the base you have vanilla and tonka bean I don't get much vanilla out of this but oh this is the EDT version I don't know if I said that already but um, I purchased Le Leon back back in December I think right and at first I hadn't I didn't get any Shalimar um, comparisons at all I didn't know where they were coming from um, but now that I've tested this one out I've worn this one a lot um, now that I've tested this one out I kind of get the comparisons and I see where they came from but completely different on the dry down 
Um, really the only similarities are in the first five minutes or so, but um, this one's really good. I love it. Um, I haven't worn it in about a month now, but I do spray this one on at night before bed. Same with Labdenum 18. That one's really cozy as well. And Musk Ravager, I kind of save for for special occasions or colder days, you know. Um, but yeah, that's my haul. <clears throat> Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see any full reviews on any of these. Or just, yeah, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to answer as much as I can. Um, but I know for sure I want to do this one. Uh, for sure these three I want to do like a full review on. And maybe Noir Anthracite if I want to tackle that. I know that one's a little harder for me to describe, but um, until next time, see you guys soon.